Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of gratitude and praise, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is October the 28th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, we're continuing our look through the life of Job in the book of Job, and today we find ourselves in chapter 32, where we begin a speech that is given by Elihu. Now, Elihu is a young man. We don't know his age, but we know he is much younger than Job and his three friends, and because of this, he has remained silent. It may be that he feels threatened by the age of these men. It may simply be a matter of custom because the way older men were treated back then is much different than the way they were treated now. The Bible even commands that when you come into the presence of someone who is older or gray haired, you would stand up as they enter into the room. When's the last time you've seen something like that take place? I don't think I ever have. But Elihu is a much younger man, and he's remained silent, but as he reminds us in this chapter that we're about to look at, he can remain silent no longer. He must speak up because the things that Job and his three friends have said have caused him to be so unsettled in his spirit, he now wants to defend the Lord who he feels like has been attacked. And so he begins in chapter 32 by saying, these three men ceased to answer Job. So the three friends, Bildad, Zophar, and Eliphaz, have nothing more to say because Job was righteous in his own eyes. In other words, they feel like they have done everything they can to get through to Job. They presented every argument that they know, and yet they cannot break through and get Job to see that he is in error and he's committed sin in his life. Because as the Bible puts it here, Job is righteous in his own eyes. And I don't think just from what we have seen so far that this is a matter of pride with Job. It's just a mere fact. Job feels like he has honored God in all that he does. And so verse 2 says, Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite of the kindred of Ram. Against Job was his wrath kindled, because he justified himself rather than God, because his attention and his focus is upon himself rather than God. And we've addressed that, so we know that to be true. Also, Elihu's wrath was kindled against his three friends, because they had found no answer, and yet they had condemned Job. Now in verse 4, we're told Elihu had waited till Job had spoken, because they were elder than he. This is a matter of respect. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. And Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, answered and said, I am young. You are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid and durst not show you mine opinion. Again, a matter of respect. While you men are speaking, I will remain silent. But when you have nothing more to say, it is my turn to speak. He says in verse 7, I said unto myself, days should speak. What he means by that, men who have lived many days on this earth should be the first to speak. And multitude of years should teach wisdom. And so Elihu says, because of your age, I thought you to be much wiser. But by your arguments, I see that you're not. He says in verse 8, there's a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter how long you've lived upon this earth. It's God's spirit in a man that allows him to speak wise words of truth. Great men are not always wise, he says in verse 9. Neither do the age understand judgment. There are many aged men that speak many words of foolishness. And there are many young men who speak wise words. Therefore, he says, hearken to me, and I will give you mine opinion. I waited for your words. I gave ear to your reasons. While you searched out what to say, 
I attended unto you. And behold, there was none of you that convinced Job or that answered his words. In other words, Job hasn't been turned in his opinion. He is the same today as the first day you began to speak unto him. You have said unto yourself, as wise old men, we have found out wisdom. God has thrust down Job, not man. Now he hath not directed his words against me, neither will I answer him with your speeches. So what I'm about to say is going to be different from what you all have said unto Job, because your arguments have not moved him to consider. Now upon hearing this in verse 15, it says they were amazed. They answered no more. They stopped speaking. They spake not, they stood still, and they answered no more. And so Elihu says, I will answer now also my part. I will show my opinion, for I am full of matter. The spirit within me constraineth me. Behold, my belly is as wine which hath no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. I will speak that I may be refreshed. I will open my lips and answer. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person, neither let me give flattering titles unto men. In other words, let me not be intimidated by your age, by your wisdom, or even by what you call yourselves. I will simply speak as I would to a very friend of mine. I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, my maker would soon take me away. And there's so much truth in that, friends, because... Titles are intimidating, and through that intimidation, many men remain silent, and we shouldn't. We think because someone is well-learned, we think because someone has chosen a career in a particular subject matter, that they might be wiser than us, and so we remain silent as opposed to asking questions or offering our own viewpoints. Now, this could be a student to a teacher to a professor this could be a parishioner to their pastor. And that's what's so dangerous about these titles. And that's what Elihu is recognizing here. Jesus himself says in Matthew chapter 23, verse 8, Do not be called rabbi or great one, for one is your master, one is your great one, even Christ. All ye are brethren. So Jesus is basically saying, look, you're all on the same playing field. And when you place titles upon one another, it causes division, it causes separation, it causes pride and self-exaltation, it causes feelings of superiority. And these titles only bring division, separation, and limits many in both teaching and educating themselves by asking questions in the things of God, in helping us to better understand the ways of God. Jesus continues in verse 9, he says, look, don't even call someone your father, for you have one father. And as if the title rabbi or father isn't enough, he says in verse 10, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. And so that's what Elihu is saying here back to Job chapter 32. He says, I'm not going to place, or I'm not even going to give attention to these flattering titles that you place upon yourself because it intimidates me and it will not allow me to say what I know needs to be said. And so that's what I want to leave you with today, friends. What Paul told Timothy, do not let anyone undermine your youth, your physical youth or your spiritual youth. Just because you may not be as well trained in the scriptures, in the things of God, doesn't mean that you should remain silent. Doesn't mean that you do not have the right to ask questions. You certainly don't want to attack anyone. You don't want to be over defensive. You don't want to be uncourteous or unkind, but you have a right to ask questions. If you don't understand why a follower of the Lord Jesus shouldn't put alcohol to his lips, you should ask someone that does and that can help you better understand that. If you don't understand why a homosexual will never enter into the kingdom of heaven, nor a lesbian, nor a transgender, according to the truth of God's word, you need to find someone that you can ask that question of so that they will guide you through the pages of scripture, but you never, ever should be intimidated or told that you will not understand or you don't have a right to ask that question. And if you disagree with them, you even have a right to state your disagreement, 
in a loving, caring way. You see, there are many things about the Bible that we always don't understand, and we shouldn't just jump on board and follow them because the Bible tells us, but we should seek deeper in understanding why God has told us that. For instance, God said a woman is never to wear pants. Why? Well, because he knows one thing leads to the next, and if, if a woman wears pants, the articles of clothing that a man would wear, would not she want to cut her hair to look like a man? To what degree will she go to look like a man and become a man? And ultimately, that would be transgenderism, but between wearing of the pants and the full-on transgenderism are many stages where a woman might want to present herself as a man, and there's danger in that. When God says you're not to cut your beards, why did he say that? Is there something special about a beard? Or does it separate the people of God from the rest of the pagan world? You see, there is a reason behind everything God says, and we have a right to pursue to understand those reasons. And once we understand them, once we can base them upon the word of God, we have a right to teach others in a loving, caring way, even if they're older than us. So if you're facing a situation of truth and you feel intimidated, the very fact that you feel intimidated is evil, is wrong. You have every right to say what you mean, mean what you say, and say it without being mean. And so go to that person, show them your viewpoint based upon the word of God, and maybe through the argument you present, they will for the first time on that specific issue see the light of truth in that matter. Well, I love you, friends. We're going to close there. I'm so thankful that you're again with us. I pray that the Lord Jesus will bless you in your journey today and that you'll walk with a spring in your step because you know Jesus and he knows you. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.